Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 16. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210, Excel 2010, Chapter 2, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we are still talking about frequency distributions, but we want to talk about relative and percent frequency distribution, both for categorical data, quantitative data, and the charts that work well with percent frequency uh, for categorical and quantitative data. Let's go over to the sheet percent freak. Now the first problem we have here, I shouldn't have had those there, is in the last couple videos when we did frequency distributions, we already had the words here. And oftentimes that's the case. Remember those are called elements, the unique listing of all the items in a particular column with a variable uh, field name at the top. But sometimes we get our data set and we don't have those. There's an easy feature in Excel that allows you to highlight the column and say, hey, extract unique list, and it will dump it right here. Now the key to this is you have to have the, f unlike the pivot table and sorting, you don't want to click in a single cell or highlight the whole table. You want to highlight and isolate just the column you want. So I'm going to highlight the field name and the entire column. So I click in the cell with the field name, control shift down arrow. Now I go up to advanced. Sorry, the data tab in the ribbon under the sort and filter, group advanced. Filter list in place, uh -uh, I want to copy to another location. It's got the list range and you want to make sure sometimes it will try and get the whole table, B1 to B201, that's right. Um, I had already done this before so I selected the copy to range but let's imagine that's not there and you simply click. Nothing for a criteria and there it is unique records only. I click OK and just like that I get the field name listed once and then each item listed only one time. Now be sure when you do this to highlight the field name because if I didn't I would get Carlota listed twice because it would think that was the field name. Alright now that we have that we can go ahead and do our frequency distribution and then from those count numbers we can calculate relative and percent. Now just as we've done before, this is categorical data, so we have one criteria. We'll use the count if. I'm going to highlight for range. First cell, not the field name. Control shift down arrow to highlight. F4 to lock it. Comma, we get to our criteria. One cell to my left. Close parentheses, control enter. I drag it down. Now we want to add these and we better get 200. Remember our data set we've been using for this chapter is uh, our transactional sales from uh, boomerang.com. So this is a sample, 200 uh, samples of transactions. So when I add these up, Alt equals is the keyboard shortcut, I get 200. Now these are fine, these are great. We have our count, 58 out of 200 were the Yanaki. We can clearly see some patterns here. Yanaki is the biggest. Sunset is the smallest. But it would be nice to convert these to decimals called relative frequencies or probabilities and uh, percent frequency. That's just decimal with a percentage number format. So how do we do this? Well we've done this a few times in class already. Equals one cell to my left. That's the part divided by the whole. Now when we copy this down it needs to be locked so hit the F4 key. Control Enter and drag this down. Now it's very important that we drag this down and then add using Alt equals. If the categories are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive, which means mutually exclusive, it means any item we find here only goes into one category. Collectively exhaustive me means we have enough um, categories to include everything from this column. And we've done our calculation correct, this better come out to one. All right. So those are, that's called relative frequency. Later we'll, in the ch chapters on probability, we'll have a column called relative frequency or probability. Probability gets when you take this number and then use it to predict something in the future. Relative frequency, 0.215 uh, belongs to Aspen. But of course it's nice to see these as percentages. Now I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, differently than the book. I, I don't think the book uh, 
there are very limited uses of the method that the book shows you. This one can be almost universal. All right, so I'm going to select one cell to the left and compare it. F4, Control Enter. I've already pre-formatted it. That would not have come up as a percentage if I had no formatted. It would have looked like this. So I pre-formatted it. I don't have to pre-format it. And oftentimes when you're doing your homework, you're not going to. So once you get your decimal, simply go up to Home. And then under the Number group, you can select whatever you want. Percentage with two decimals. If you don't like that, if you want more, Control-1 to format cells, Number tab, and then you have the Freedom. Click OK. I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to do the same thing. Alt equals. I want to make sure that that equals uh, 1 or the formatted version of 1 100%. Now here's how the book shows you how to do it, percent frequency. I mean, you get the idea, right? So we can, the, the beauty of this is that we can clearly use this in our discussions. 29%. Oh yeah, Yanakis were the most at 29% of all sales. Uh, we sold a Yanaki. Right? If you wanted to then uh, use that to predict the future, all right, so next year we're planning on 10,000 sales, 29 of them, percent of them will probably be Yanaki, so we'd use that times the 1,000. Now let's see how the book does this. It says, oh yeah, part divided by whole, F4, and then times 100. What I don't like about this is it gives you an integer. That's 22. Now we talked about in chapter 0 about number formatting. This is the number, 0.22. If you're ever going to use a calculation, that's the number. Even here, we talked about in chapter 00, the number in the cell is 0.22. This is the formatted symbolic representation of that number. So for calculations, both of these will work. But what? Not that. We have converted that number from 0.22 to 22. Now we can copy it down and then add it up, Alt equal, and we better get 100. Now the reason that people do this, and they either use the percent frequency like this or this, or sometimes you see it you know, with uh, in parentheses, in a lot of accounting and things like that, you'll see it like that. It's a, a report formatting issue. You want to see decimals. Uh, uh, I mean, you want to see integers in the column. The only time you do this is when this is the final report and you're never going to use it for calculations. So in that case, that's OK. However, if you're ever going to estimate, so here's our next 250 transactions. Estimate Carlota sold, we'd say equals, we can use our decimal over here, relative frequency times this. And of course, we're going to get 55. So estimating, using this data from the, our sample to estimate for something from the future, we're going to infer, looking into the future, I'm going to estimate that I have 55. Uh, this is our best guess based on our past data or our sample data. So the incorrect method would be to do this times. So that's my only point here. And of course, you could do this times the percentage also. All right, so those are correct. That one's not incorrect. So if you're ever going to have a table filled with calculations, which we are going to do a lot in this class, right? We're going to take samples, calculate relative frequencies, percentages, and then use them to make certain calculations. This will never work. This is only for formatting. All right, now what about for categorical data? We want to calculate a or create a chart, a visual interpretation. Now this is categorical data, so the perfect chart is a pie chart, comparing the parts to the whole. Now I want these labels and these percentages. How do I highlight two columns or two sets of cells or ranges of cells not next to each other? I highlight the first one. I hold Control. I highlight the second one. Now I can go up to Insert, Pie. The rule about pi, and we talked about this in chapter 00, don't use these. It distorts the percentages. I'm going to use the flat one. It doesn't distort the percentages. I can click on this and delete. I can click here and type um, up here. Uh, percent, I'm going to leave that percent frequency. That's fine. We could have a more explicit title if we wanted. I'm going to go up to layout data labels. And I'm going down to more. In the last video, we used a lot of the built-in ones because it was easy. That's what we always wanted. But this one gives you more control. 
I'm going to say, and this kind of gives you a preview. So we have the percentages, which happens to be the value. By the way, you could do this with the uh, the frequency table because it has a an option to show the percentages, but we'll just show the value and then category name. So that way we have the boomerang names and the percentages. I'm going to click close and uh, we can pull these out. We could also rotate. Uh, this looks okay here. Control 1 to format any chart element and there's a rotation. Let's see, I think if I go like that, way over here. Okay, so that's silly. All right, but now we can pull each one out. Actually, let's reduce the size here. I'm going to point to the corner and click and drag. And uh, then we can clearly see, and probably, you know, a small chart like this is not the best, but for this video, it's fine. You can pull them out and do them however you want. So we can clearly see the percentages. Visually, we see Yanaki's the biggest. Carlota and Yanaki and Aspen take up. Uh, most of them. Now, so that is relative frequency based on categorical data. Now let's see quantitative. And again, we'll use this relative frequency, these types of frequency distributions and relative frequency a lot when we do probability. All right, so I'm going to do this one with a pivot table. I click in a, a single cell. I go up to insert pivot table, pivot table, or alt NVT existing worksheet. I'm going to click here. Again, sometimes this is dangerous to put this in a sheet with lots of other stuff because the pivot tables can pivot, right? But for the video, I'm putting it all in one place. All right, let's see. We want, we have to group this because this is a frequency distribution, so I pull it down to rows. Oh, it's already grouped. The reason it's already grouped is because I actually grouped it on this sheet before right click ungroup all right so right click group and we're going to do start at 0 we're going to go to 350 again we saw earlier in the last video how to to figure out what all those numbers should be click okay all right now i'm going to drag revenue down to values and we have labels here so it automatically counts go up to design we always want to show in tabular there it is revenue I'm going to click here and type frequency. Now, let's drag this down here again. We're going to do relative. So I'm going to drag this down here. And we, you could uh, do relative and percent. I'm just going to do percent. So I'm going to type here and type percent frequency. Enter. Now, right click in a couple videos ago, we talked a lot about pivot tables. Value field settings has everything. Value field settings has the name, the functions, show values as, which we're going to do, and number formatting. So I'm going to go to show values as, and here it is. There's a drop down. Later, as we do more and more pivot tables, I'll show you how to do it a different way. But what's nice about the value field settings, it's like one stop shopping. And what do we want? We want percentage of column total. That means when I click this, that's the column total. Column total. So each one of these will be compared to that. Click OK. And by default, it gives us percentage. Now let's go ahead and calculate a um, pivot, uh, pivot chart. And we're going to do a histogram. Now, the thing about this is the histogram is going to be the same as we did in last video. It's just going to show percentages instead of frequencies, which is perfectly all right. Now, one thing about a pivot table is it will show both of these. So I actually want to drag this up. I really only needed to do one. I'm going to drag this up here to get rid of it. And now we have just our categories and our percent frequency. Now, I click in a single cell. We could go up to Insert Column. But I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt F1. Remember, that's the default chart. I'm going to right click these uh, gray boxes here and so hide all field buttons that allows you to filter if you want I'm going to click there and delete I'm going to click here and type up here uh, percent frequency histogram hopefully I spelled that right get rid of the uh, 
those, get rid of this. Control. I'm selecting, I deleted that, now I'm going to select all the columns, Control-1, I want gap width of 0. How about border color, we'll leave them all blue, solid. This is the border line, so if the, the columns are all blue, you got to differentiate with them, them somehow, so I'm going to do with a solid black line. Click OK. I'm going to go up to Layout, Data Labels, and Outside End. So there's a percent frequency histogram, relative frequency histogram there. And we can clearly see it's the same shape. We did the same example last video. I'm actually going to close this make this a little bit smaller. The only difference is we have percentages at the top instead of the actual count. And again, later in this class, this will absolutely help us when we do uh, probability distributions. Uh, we can clearly see the shape here, and we can clearly see the percentages from 0 to 50 bucks. Uh, that's where most people spent their money. And for purchases, this is the kind of pattern. Now let's do one last thing. I would like to know what this is down here, so layout, horizontal below, revenue or sales, and I'm going to put in parentheses dollars to let know what the unit is, or we could say uh, revenue per transaction. All right, so there's some r the the revenue from transactions from 100 to 150 bucks, 18 percent of the transactions fell into that category or class. All right, uh, so percent frequency for categorical, the appropriate chart, a pie chart. You could do a uh, column chart also, but pies are nice to compare. Uh, parts to the whole. And then we saw qualitative data. We grouped it in a pivot table and then did a percent frequency histogram. All right, see you next video.